All right. Well, it is two o'clock. Welcome, everyone. I'm Craig O'Neill. With me today is Michael Catullo, and we are going to be discussing automated retention strategies, specifically leveraging the rainy day folder inside of Autoflow. And I want to say shout out to Michael. First and foremost, it's been a bit since we've had you on the panel on the webinars. Uh, this came up in conversation the other day. It's like, yeah, we got to get you back on here. But I want to make a point very clear. Michael has been very busy and allows me to be able to even produce these webinars at all. Thanks to everything he does. So thank you, Michael. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm very, I'm very happy to finally be back on. And I know it's, uh, my, my schedule has been a little, um, little booked lately, to say yeah. the least. We like it that way. Now, Michael spends a lot of time onboarding and training with uh, new clients and existing clients as well. I think that's clear for most everyone in here. You can always reach out to us. We will schedule time to work with you to try to make sure your team is leveraging the tool to its fullest capabilities. And, and with Michael on this team, uh, you're in great hands. And of course, I always enjoy any opportunity to meet with you as well. Now, rainy day folder. This is a little bit of an under leveraged feature inside of the tool based on what we monitor. So we are going to go into a very shortly on this. But before we do, I always like to begin with a little bit on our initial poll of our audience that we do in the registration, because I think this question is really pertinent. And this was a horrible question, mind you, for me to display percentage answers. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to say my polls are super scientific. I, I I do have a hypothesis and I do then take in the data and try to assess it. The conclusions were a little confusing when I had the numbers typed out on this one, but what percentage of inspections uh, findings, what, what percent of inspection findings, red or yellow items are estimated in your shop? And this is a kind of the crux of the scenario that led to the creation of rainy day folder, mind you. But I was actually very pleased with the results. One, it did support my hypothesis. <laughs> but two, I'm actually really impressed. Uh, and considering the audience and Autoflow users in general, I, I got to say, it's a privilege working with you folks. 26% uh, of people getting all of the inspection findings estimated on visits. That's that's pretty close. Obviously, I'm sure there's a margin of error in some of that. But that's remarkable. The yeah. other piece is 80 to 90%, right? That's almost half of people. 80 to 90% of the items found on an inspection being estimated. Not great, but not bad by any means. And then uh, 60 to 70%, that's another 7.9%. You see why it's so confusing with the way I worded these questions? It's terrible. <laughs> that's a good job on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why we're spelling it out there. Half of all items, 50 percenters, <laughs> or only 5.3% in this case. And then 13% of people weren't even tracking how many of their inspection items actually do end up on the estimate. Now, I was actually at a client shop this week here in Grand Rapids, uh, where the general manager actually was at uh, one of the Christian Brothers locations here, uh, and Mike, the manager at the Cascade branch. And he was actually doing that comparison while I was there with the guys like, hey, we found a couple of things that on this ticket that didn't get estimated on the RO. And asking the advisors like what happened with that it's like oh yeah it was something silly too it was like a like a leak a general leak or something like that and there was no recommendation or note of it on the estimate uh, i think it's just a wonderful practice that they were doing this service advisors like oh yeah so yeah what should we have done we should have like at least made a recommendation for the degrease and and uh diagnosed the leak a little more whatever it was uh but that's something we do encourage tracking. And we made it really quite easy to do inside of Autoflow. You're going to see how we do this with some of our yes, no toggles inside of the DVI. Now, automation is key, but we'll we'll touch on some of that stuff here in a moment. <clears throat> the first thing that I like to talk about, and you've heard us talk about this before, I'm sure, it is the 300% rule. The 300% rule is easier to see on a slide. So <laughs> when whenever I tell this to people verbally, it gets a little more confusing. 100% of all the vehicles that come in are going to get inspected. They're going to have some form of inspection. Then 100% of the findings will get estimated or documented. Some things aren't being estimated to be sold in our facility, or maybe it's outside of our specialty, right? But we must document those findings still. And then 100% of those findings get presented to the client. And I use the word client very specifically in this case, uh, rather than customer. I do believe there is a difference. But add those three 100% rules together and you have one 300% rule. If there's no math nerds in here, this this all works out. I know some people say you can't have 300% of anything. That's actually not possible. And yeah, well, 
this rule, absolutely possible. We try to get that sentiment, this idea really ingrained when we're teaching on DVI processes. This is one of those pieces that can make a massive impact on the bottom line. And best practices all together, if shops aren't doing this, we're leaving some real serious gaps of knowledge that the customer might need in order to keep their vehicle running how I see it, safe, efficient, reliable. Those are our professional responsibilities here. Michael, you've probably taught this several times. Quite a few, actually. It's something I like to bring up all, quite often. And and one of the things is, is also the rule of how what a tech is supposed to be doing. I find that to be the the quintessential breakdown of what a tech's job is. Um, Craig, real quick, um, yeah. I'm getting a lot of questions on the fact that chat has been disabled. Um, silly. You could make sure that is activated. Yeah, I want it to be active. That's funny. Well, we'll fix that in a minute. Sorry, folks, we do have the Q&A piece. Feel free to chat something into there too. Exactly. Perfect. No, thanks for, thanks for highlighting that for me. I don't know why that's that way. Hey, I found it. A simple setting. There we go. So guys, chat should be now open. chat can be lively. Thanks. Now we can get some, some Thanks for raising chat. attention to that. I like that piece. So I think that was worth a minute to do that. <laughs> so thank you. All right. Now with this 300% rule, right? Like, so Michael, where we were talking, like our professional responsibility, technicians in specific, Make sure the vehicle is safe, reliable, and efficient. Every time I do one of these lectures, type of this, I talk about what, what is green, what is yellow, what is red. And I take off the burden of a technician's shoulder any kind of trying to ascertain between red or yellow. If, like, do I do yellow if it's mm, okay right now, but should be done later? No, 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 no. I make it real simple. And honestly, guys, I could, I say this a lot, I could do inspections without yellow. I could do green and red all day because red simply to me always means. There's something wrong with it that we can take care of. Doesn't matter how long it's going to be that it might keep you going down the road. Making that judgment call, truly impossible unless your crystal ball's intact. So technicians, once they're dialed in and doing those good inspections and marking things confidently, green, yellow, red, that's where we're going to find ourselves uh, very, very... Uh, and and I've, I've looked at a lot when I do reviews of shop DVI processes and you come across a lot of shops that... I can go entire DVIs where the whole thing is yellow. It's like, why is everything yellow? This is a leaking. There's a leak here. I see the fluid. It's leaking. Why is this a yellow? Why is this? It's a fear of making things red a lot of times with the text, but it's either to manufacturer specification in my mind, or it's not to manufacturer specification. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so 300% rule. If anyone has any questions on this, please let me know. I've heard this from multiple trainers in the industry. Uh, actually, one who was our guest very recently, Mark Seawall. He's with the Institute now. Uh, he was one of the first people I ever heard present this. And he was on a webinar way back when he was with RLO. Beautiful stuff. And it can make a positive impact in your shop. Now, we want to make a case that builds on top of that rule for inspection-based follow-ups. Now, one of my earlier coaches in this industry was Bob Greenwood. I know some of you know him uh, or knew him. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away a little over a year ago, uh, but I quote him all the time, all the time. <laughs> and and the best thing about it was that's where I heard very first time what our job is, our professional responsibilities, make sure the vehicle is safe, reliable, and efficient. And his question to me in a class of people was, uh, was Craig, how can you do that unless you're inspecting every single car that comes into your shop? And it's like, yeah, no, I didn't have an inspection process for years in the family business. Uh, but the way Bob taught us to do things, the inspection became the absolute record of truth for managing all of our recommendations to the client. The next record off of that was our relationship with the client and being able to connect the state of health with their car with their real life needs. And when you genuinely care for the people, that you're speaking to and have a positive relationship. And we say it all the time, this is a relationship-based business. That inspection becomes not just a sales gimmick or some other, uh, let's see what we can get on this ticket today tool. This is a tool for really taking our responsibility very, very seriously and doing our due diligence on this. Now, a courtesy level inspection versus a comprehensive inspection and all those things, we could talk all day on that. The industry, terrible at defining those terms. 
I think a courtesy inspection is very basic. It can deal with some things, but it's going to just on the surface make additional recommendations for further assessment. In a lot of cases, uh, seven to twelve minutes is what I try to target the time for technicians on a courtesy level inspection. And Michael, you've been in the dealer world. How long were you seeing in either dealership inspections? Dealership inspections at the time uh, of my being there were paper inspections with a very poor process in place. Um, but the total time for the inspection, once the process was really dialed down, was hard to gauge because I actually had three different people use doing the inspection process. Uh, my inspection process actually started in the service drive with the porters who did a section of it. And then it went through a the drive through getting different sections done as it made its way to the rack. Um, but once it got to the rack, the technician portion was about five minutes. Mm -hmm. So the total inspection time would have been around seven to ten. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. That's perfect. So yeah, with inspections is the record of truth, right? Th this is the next thing that we realized and Autoflow, we have a new module that's coming up. We've hinted at it for a little while now. We have this marketing module coming up. And the key question we get is, does it do deferred service? And it actually will very soon, but not yet. People ask on deferred service so regularly that my question back then is, what are you doing right now with your deferred service? And startlingly, we discovered that a lot of people are not actually using that feature in existing marketing platforms because that gets cluttered or it's not receiving great data. And I make this case all the time. If they didn't estimate the findings from the inspection in the first place, deferred services has a major blind spot that we need to be cognizant of. Uh, if we are not using the inspection, that initial record of the technician's actual findings on his actual eyes on that car, there's a good chance deferred work doesn't even contain something that we need to remind the client. I think one thing I in the chat was brought up by Jordan mm -hmm. was how do we overcome the aspect when we have a customer come in that has a laundry list of things on the vehicle, not hitting them with that large bill that scares a customer away from it. Why would we not cut down on that, not show them everything? And I mean, I'm going to take a little stab at my first part of my answer here with this, yeah. but when we're looking at the DVI as part of the vehicle health of the, the health, overall health of the vehicle, if we're finding items on that DVI that need to be addressed on the vehicle, when we make the estimates to the customer, we want to make sure that we are giving them how much will it take to make their vehicle as safe and efficient as reliable as possible. This is where it really becomes a service advisor's job to help inform the customer as to maybe some different options as to, well, we can take care of these items now, these items at this time. When a customer brings up the, the comment that we are nickeling and diming them we're trying to nitpick their car we need to let them know that all we're doing is looking at the items on the vehicle and finding the things that are not working to manufacture spec making them aware of these items so that they do not become a breakdown in the future mm -hmm. yes and when you ask the customer would you prefer me to not tell you about this and have this break you down on the side of the road in three months or would you rather know about it and save some money over a month to come back and have it taken care of prior to that being a breakdown. Yeah. When you put it into the customer's eyes that we're, we're looking at it from the concern of you, your family, and we want to make sure that we avoid those things that happen in life with your vehicle that are considered unexpected. Yeah. But they're not. They're, a lot of these things are not unexpected items. They're things that with a proper DVI, with taking your vehicle to someplace regularly, they can be, managed and avoided as leaving you on the side of the road yeah no 100 percent. and this is this is this plays right into that conversation they have up front we've done some other webinars on this and this will be on our youtube channel as well yes this will be recorded for advisors that are busy working during the day we know daytime training is very hard we've got your back recording will be up uh, but this is this is kind of where we uh, bob greenwood again i'll mention him he talked about there's there's really two common business models in automotive repair. There's the do it for me approach, and then there's the manage it for me approach. And he was very much trying to get people oriented towards the manage it for me, taking a little bit of weight off our client's shoulders and saying, here is all of the things that we need to be watching on this vehicle, right? We aren't necessarily trying to push them into doing it today. And you can tackle that front 
right up front any way you need to. I would address, of course, we're in the business of fixing cars and this is how we make our living, but our professional responsibility, boom, you lay that down again, is this. And when you've communicated that responsibility, as Michael was just saying too, they're going to see the benefit and the value in a different way that we're not just trying to do this to nickel and dime you. That is not our goal. It is not our goal. Uh, it happens to be what it takes to keep our business running so we can fulfill our professional responsibility, but that is that. business. Yeah. And I explained it this way many times, and this is key point on our slide here as well. The solving of the peaks and valleys symptom that we have in this peaks, valleys, fast famine, whatever you want to call it. This industry has always had those dips and dives in our scheduling. And I, I haven't seen that as much in the post COVID years. I do believe, and I believe we're just starting to see the trends on total ticket counts and everything else where it's actually getting back into the realm of sane normal. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's that's a good thing, but it also means that we do need to start relying again on some of our practices and refocusing our efforts on getting clients to come back in at appropriate intervals. When you're managing things through an inspection, it allows you to start having more pertinent reminders, and then you can invite people back in to address the opportunities that you've identified when you have an opportunity to address those things perhaps at their advantage, perhaps not. This is what we call the rainy day folder. It's called the rainy day folder because when you have a rainy day, that is a day that is just not as sunny <laughs> as the other ones. A little slower. <laughs> yep, a little bit slower. So this is also when our team has some more time on their hands. Instead of waiting for that phone to ring, we're going to go into that rainy day folder and poke around and find some of those opportunities that we have already actually identified in our inspection process with real eyes on a car, not some algorithm that's just trying to pull work out of our estimates. It's a much more effective way of following up. And to that last point on the deferred work, one of the big things I see that is really gobbing up the deferred work strategies a lot of shops have is when you do a presentation presentation with options. And you have option one includes that service that, that is being recommended, but option two also includes that service and then later is declined. Well, shoot, now that deferred work is still getting followed up on when our automated deferred work stuff goes out and the customer's like, no, I authorized that. And then what happens when you make a reminder to a client on something that is no longer pertinent? No. We lose trust noise. in the customer. Yeah, it's doubt. Yeah, and it's noise. And that's discredited your follow-up techniques. So automation is a goal. We have a solution. We're going to dive right in here in a second. But uh, I really wanted to make sure that that the case is well established for why this folder existed. This is something that came from Chris's mind. Me, me and Michael have, have one, one thing in common here. We get to work, in my opinion, one of the greatest visionaries of this industry. And this is something that came out of his experience as a shop owner combined with the software development side of things. So mm -hmm. as we go into this, we're going to cover a couple of points. And inside of our webinar description for the subjects, we, we hit on a lot of these. But we are going to start this in the tool from the point where an inspection has already been submitted to us. We're going to assume your technicians are already putting out good inspections. And now we're going to go into it and we're going to talk about briefly on the sales call side of things and then how we track those approvals by leveraging that inspection sheet inside of that sales call. So let's go into our demo environment here with standard auto. Come across good on the screen, Michael. Yep. Seen it Perfect. great. Thank you very much. All right, so what we've done, we've already prepped a ticket here for our fictional client, may be done. I love our names. These are so fun. They don't get old. No, they don't. <laughs> this we one's in the that. estimating part of the process, right? But Michael's already done his diligence on this. He's built that estimate. We're at that point where we're staging that sales call. And this is, of course, where we recommend the status change into the waiting on approval status. So May is going to receive this. And I use the down tick timer very cleverly on the status, I would say, with the ability to set these timers. You're going to want it in a threshold that you know you have to call them if they don't reply by text. Right. Average text viewed in three minutes. I expect that will not turn red. Uh, we can just be there. This is the one time I don't mind my advisors waiting for that phone to ring because it happens pretty quick. I'm sure a lot of you can testify to that. <laughs> Edmund's comment, Chris needs all the gassing he can get. That's funny. I know, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is when the customer gets the text, they do call you. Now that call, it happens. We've gone through this before in some of our other webinars. I'm not going to go into it too much. We've done some art of advising webinars on this. Uh, but I'm going to have this inspection open 
I'm going to have it ready to go when that customer calls. This is on one screen. I will have my shop management systems estimate on the other. Uh, dual screens, guys, this is Craig's number one advice for this industry. If you don't have dual screens at your workstation, uh, you are losing some efficiency from your service advisors. I guarantee it. But having actually no trained a shop today that had their techs had dual monitors at their stations. Mm, and I went, good. I need a picture of this. I, I need this. Yeah. That's Oh, not to segue in the CBA I was at, one of the techs just got one of those new diagnostic cards. He had this new Microsoft-based scan tool, it had a HDMI go to a touchscreen monitor on this beautiful Diag cart. I was I was enthralled with this. It was amazing. He was doing the DVI on his scan tool. It's awesome. Totally nerding out over there, aren't <laughs> oh, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, there's going to be some great case studies from that, that sequence. <laughs> but yeah, his uh, Snap-on guy, I think, really likes him. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. He... <laughs> <laughs> so here's the DVI, folks. We've got a Ford Focus that we did the inspection on. We have all the line items. Now, a service advisor is one of the best things you can do when you're going through this with the customer on the phone. Have these filters ready to go. You're going to use these so that you can actually move through this very quickly and efficiently. I am not a guy that's going to go line by line by line by line with the customer on the inspection. But when that call comes in, my first comment with them is always, have you had a chance to view that inspection yet? I know the answer. You know how the DVI buttons change color, turns green. We know in Autoflow when that client opens those yep. inspections. They don't need to know that. We can let them know we're watching if you want. That's kind of fun too. But <laughs> point is, I do want to at least go through this in conversation with them, ask if they have any questions, and then draw out some things. And I do like summarizing things as best we can. What you'll notice, and the number one question I think we get on the DVI when we're training on this, Michael, is what on earth are these yes, no toggles on the right <laughs> side? <laughs> All the time. Yeah. And I'll, I'll admit there's a piece of confusion on this that I would like to see addressed. And that is the fact that it says approval, no recall. It's like, what's that mean? That there's no recall for the vehicle? Yeah, we have a feature on the DVI at the top of the page. It's got recalls in there for the vehicle based off of it. And that's cool. But that's not actually what it means. What we're actually saying is, no, this doesn't need to be recalled again next time this car comes in. So you use that yes, no toggle for anything that you've addressed with the customer or had approval with the customer. Now, by addressed, I mean that it's not something that has to be estimated. So you can use the safe like the, the four corner walk around is a great example. Sometimes people mark it yellow or red. There's nothing to sell on it, but we did discuss it with the customer. So I mark it yes on this. We don't need to recall that again in our follow-ups. This is a key indicator for if it's going to be in uh, our follow-ups or not. If, if this stays as no, it means we didn't address it and it still will have to be addressed in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we get the approval for these red and yellow items, we have four things on this ticket here. So we're going to say, yeah, she was all in on the windshield wipers. Uh, let's say in our conversation, yep, yeah, you want to take care of that sway bar link. And uh, well, we'll leave the brake pads as a no for now. And the rotors, we'll leave that off. So this would be a good example of how a ticket with partial approvals might look in this case. That is it. As you gain those approvals, you mark them approved in your shop management system as well. But this is the document I'm using in that approval part of the call. These are critical inputs for us to be able to move towards automation in the rainy day folder. You get a second chance in the visit to deal with these if you are not using this in your sales approval. So hold tight on that. From here, this job's going to get all the approvals marked. We're going to move ahead in that process. And Michael, go ahead and mark that all approved in the management system. If yeah, you I am now. And the technician, of course, will be able to do the work order. He's going to do the work that gets approved on there. Goes pretty standard. Um, is there any questions on the DVI with that yes, no toggle? Anything I missed, Michael? Don't think so. I think you covered that one pretty thoroughly. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yes, no toggles are there to use in the conversation with the client and mark things that do get approved or don't need to be recalled again in the future. So, All right, Craig, and that, that ticket's been authorized. I'm there's one other thing I do feel I should address here, um, and I didn't send the inspection. So, see, I already broke our process. I know you did. This is a sin. I didn't send it. Of course, they didn't view it yet. So we'll just send that here because I want to cheat here a second. And I'm going to open up the inspection so you can see the customer view of it. There's a reason I want to show you this because when we send something from the rainy day folder in a second, the inspection is going to look a little bit different. 
I'm going to go a little bit smaller on this, getting that cell phone sweet spot size. <laughs> so we have all these items here. Do you notice that we have addressed and unaddressed items inside of here? It's for red and yellow items. Shows unaddressed. You see those clearly, Michael? Yep. Letting Perfect. the customer realize that we are not, that is something we did not authorize. Yeah. Now, this is an optional. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if, you, if you looked at your inspections in Autoflow and you don't see that on your customer view, I'm going to show you where to go to make sure you turn that on. So this is a key point in DVI setup. You can go in your admin menu, DVI setup, DVI setup. This is that screen with a bunch of the toggles that you have to turn on certain features. Worth looking at periodically. If you don't catch our emails on feature releases, we do do mm -hmm. things in here that, that sometimes are quite cool. Uh, this is where I want to go down right here is where we have show customer items addressed. And you'll probably want to turn that on only when your yeah. service advisors actually begin using the yes, no toggles. Right. Um, that's why it is a toggled option in here. We know that if we <laughs> if we had that on by default and you guys weren't using yes, no toggles, you're going to get phone calls from customers that say, oh, hey, we addressed that. <laughs> and, I, I mean, while we're in here too, there's one other feature. There's one other area where this yes, no toggle does come into play that we have an option to turn on and off in here. And that's in the, the repopulate previous red, yellow inspection data. And this is the other side where, yes, these no, these toggles do work with the rainy day folder, but they also do work so that the next time the customer comes in, any items that were marked as unaddressed in the last visit will repopulate on the DVI, showing that the last time the customer was in, we called these items, but they were not fixed. Yep. Shows right up on the DVI for your technicians. And it's worth doing. Uh, if you haven't seen that before, a lot of people turn that off because their technicians didn't understand that these notes were already there and, or, or why and sometimes service advisors weren't correcting them. But it's really handy because it puts on the next inspection for the following visit that this item was found at this mileage on this date. And it just is going to re-alert you to take a look at those things. That's the idea behind it. Sometimes verify that it either still it. needs addressed or whether they had it addressed themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. No, very useful feature. You still see DVI history. You don't need to use this feature, but that is pretty handy. If you Even if you just want to use yes, no's for your own internal purposes, that's a, a great ability. Now, uh, the other features that you might not have seen, it's worth talking about in here. You can show the customer the status the vehicle's on, checking in inspection, estimating those statuses. Um, that'll show up in that customer view. If those are toggled yes, they'll see the status right here. And then there's also, if your shop management system is a level five or higher on the integration, where we have the shop management system history, you can also show customer history. And that allows the customer to be able to go in and uh, actually click on the history and see the records of repairs that have been done. It will prompt them for a PIN code that will be texted to their number on record, uh, just for security purposes. But that's a neat feature as well. So these three things, um, in my opinion, uh, once you've gotten to this point in the DVIs and your utility of Autoflow, very strong uh, for that customer microsite. That's what we call this page, actually, when they're viewing the DVIs, the microsite. Now, moving forward from there, I think that we hit everything on that piece, correct, Michael? Yes, we did. Okay, so we talked about a second chance on the yes, no. So rainy day folder is now able to essentially benefit from this feature with quality control checks. We've made major enhancements to quality control because when you are using the yes, no's, I consider this a part of the ticket process that we want to make sure and ensure happens with consistency. Uh, consistency is the operative word here. You can make your own quality control sheets. So I'm going to go, and I did that quickly here, but that's in QC setup, quality control setup. And you're going to see this option to mm -hmm. show DVI items. A lot of you may not be aware of this addition to quality control. This is cool. Uh, there's some enhancements I still want to see on this. I actually want to see it forced onto the quality control sheet myself. Uh, down the road, we'll have some additional enhancements to this. But right now, I'm going to show you how this works when we go through the end of this ticket process. So we're going to make some assumptions here. We're going to say our technician did a great job doing the work order, finishing up this ticket, and we're going to go into the quality control status. Uh, this would also probably be automated in your workflow, but we want to stay very focused on this conversation here. The quality control sheet for this car is going to be, well, either one, if you 
I didn't notice too, another feature of our quality control setup is you can have different types of quality control sheets, mm -hmm. which is great. And you can perform more than one on a visit. So very cool. I usually just, just use one sheet and I have the items broken out and you're going to see this format. And I think I've shared this in the past. And if you ever need a copy of this or help building this, email me or Michael, our emails will be on the final slide here too, but most of you probably yeah. have them. Uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a great starting point to enter into QC. I have personal goals this year of seeing QC sheets go into overdrive with our users. <laughs> so hopefully uh, you guys can embrace this. Ticket item, inspection performed. Yep. And determine who's going to do your QC process. We could talk on that and we have for a while. On <laughs> I was about to say, we do have a yeah. webinar on the QC there, Craig. Was, um, yeah, we, can... we won't redo that webinar. How about that? <laughs> Ticket item, marked inspection items addressed. Yes, I make that part of my QC sheet. So somebody's job is to make sure that was done. Now, that could be considered our second chance in this. So I guess we're going to have a third chance third here chance. in a second. <laughs> yeah, it gets better all the time. <laughs> Final road test done. We're all set here. This is going great, guys. We did a wonderful job. Uh, let's say this, this one, we actually did get it perfect. When I hit submit report, watch what happens next. This pop-up occurs. Do you realize what this is, right? This is the other items that were on that DVI that were marked red or yellow. I didn't look at, through that whole sheet very good. I did a quick estimate perhaps on this job. Uh, lots of process breakdown in that demonstration, folks. We can dissect that for days. This is your next chance to go and, oh, yes, let's take a look at what we sold today, what was on that estimate, what was done, and let's mark those on light. Do we need to recall our exterior photographs? No. For follow up? No, we've no. addressed that. Correct. Right. Differential fluid. I don't even know if we estimated that. Did we estimate that? I'm wondering <laughs> if that car has a differential. At this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure it's lubricated with automatic transmission fluid. Well, no, that would be a manual transmission fluid. Oh, good for you. I forget who I'm talking to, Mr. Stick there. Yeah. All right. Good for you. But no, we did leave those brake pads all off there. So this is this is probably accurate. We closed that. This sheet is submitted. What we've done in that modal is actually really unique in the tool. We've we've adjusted the DVI from this QC sheet. So you don't have to go back into the QC sheet to do it. Could you have? Absolutely. Anytime during the visit, even if it's just before you post the order, you could have gone to the DVI yourself as well, and you could have just gone and hit those yes, no approvals. Shoot, you can even have a filter to see which ones are on there. And if you just wanted to focus on that filter and compare that to your estimate, works outstanding, especially if you're rocking dual screens. <laughs> so that is the strategy all the way up through the QC process. Now, We've talked about the rainy day folder. We've talked about all these things. But so far, we've really only covered our DVI process with yes, no toggles. What on earth is up with the rainy day folder? I'm going to close this ticket. We're going to put, actually, Michael, I'll let you close that. Go ahead and I'll post close that. that out of stand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. And then uh, once that's posted off the screen. Ticket 117 will be closed. Did you take the money yet? I took the money. It should be posted. Perfect. There it goes. Yeah, yeah. I just saw a drop. Perfect. Real-time dashboard in action. Perfect. And Michael's in Pittsburgh. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. See, the service advisor team can be remote from anywhere. Fantastic. Remote advising. <laughs> we won't redo that webinar too. <laughs> Rainy day folder. Let's go into it now. So that's in your menu. Service advisors. Your menu will be a little shorter than my administrator menu there, but you'll see the rainy day folder. All service advisors have access to this. So when you get that slow day, this is where you can go. And now this is built based off of the date range that you have selected. You're going to see RO number 117 here because that falls in this date range, which is really just looking seven days back um, by default, like most of our reports. You can bust this out in any range you need to up to, uh, you can look at, I think, 90 days at once in different sec sections, right? So I would go monthly at minimum if I'm manually doing this. Uh, weekly, I think this should be checked by someone in the shop. I honestly, when I train shops, depending on the volume of the shop, I actually say that this should be the job of somebody every morning. And it should be assigned to one person mm -hmm. because when you assign a job to one person, not to a group of people, 
it gets done more regularly. No one assumes someone else is doing it and you have somebody to hold accountable for that task being done. You have multiple owners, you have no owners. But what I do with this is if a shop is doing 20, 30 tickets a day and you look and you say, hey, at the end of the week, you sit down and go through these at 20 tickets a day over five days, you got a hundred tickets you've got to go through. Doing this every morning as part of your morning routine makes it something that's a lot more manageable in my mind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I actually unticked a box here that's going to be uh, very key. Uh, this box is in, in our demo environment, very safe. I'm going to warn you, and I'll let the mouse over show you what it does. Check this box to automatically add rainy folder reminders to your reminder queue. So really... Wow, this could have been a two-minute webinar. Guys, this is how you make Rainy Day folder automated. This button right here, this little tick Click box. the button, set your parameters. And <laughs> the reason we want to have this conversation, however, is that, hey, don't click that unless you're using yes, no toggles because you will be sending impertinent reminders at that point. Thank you, so, Yep. And so now take a look at how this is. We're going we're gonna to play with this from a ticket that we're already familiar with, though. So we're going to go back in the last seven-day view. I just wanted to show you the date range ability. What we're looking at are any tickets that have unaddressed items. That is what is in this folder. So this is tickets completed at that date range with unaddressed items on the DVI. If you guys are doing this accurately, you can see how valuable this is right out of the gate. Now, we make it very easy for you to uh, create a reminder date and send things. I'll actually go through this in a different sequence. We can click this to send now or schedule this out in the future individually. And you have a superpower in this folder. The DVI becomes read only after the ticket closes. So you lose your ability to edit an inspection sheet, but the rainy day folder does allow you a fourth chance, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> at auditing your tickets for the yes no approvals four chances this is better than baseball <laughs> so we have now this ticket open uh oh i didn't open the right one i opened the wrong one i'm going to open the right one we're going to open maybe duns and look what we have right the differential fluid that we don't think is real we have the brake pads and the brake rotors and we can say like ah you know what we did address the differential fluid. I told them that was an error on our DVI. I'm sorry, and we apologize. So that actually does not need to be in their reminder. So we have just achieved an edit on a read-only DVI from this place. There's two clicks to do it, so don't worry. It cannot be undone <laughs> if you do that. Uh, maybe, I don't know. You could ask support. Don't ask support. But you could ask support if there's a magic power they have. I don't go that way. We're not going there. <laughs> oh, and I forgot one other thing. If there is history on this vehicle in your shop management system, you don't need to have two screens on this piece. You can do it from one because you're going to see shop management system history right here as well. I, this is actually collected nightly, I believe. So the yes. history, I do not believe, will be here the instant you close the ticket. But the next day, if you're doing this the day after that stuff, uh, Michael's advice on the next morning, uh, great advice. You would be able to audit it right from a single screen and say, oh, yeah, no, here's the deferred work. Here's the approved work. Here's that and this. This is an accurate, ready to send, rainy day folder reminder. How do I send it? This tab right here on the right. You see that? And then you have the option, of course, of sending by text and email. If you have an email for that client, it will automatically probably be on that option. If you only want to text, you can text. If you only want to email, you can email. <clears throat> you have a templated message. This is set up on the previous screen. I'll show you that again in a minute. And you can customize this to your heart's content. All I will tell you is you do not want to break that link right here. So Michael, I'm going to send you this rainy day folder reminder. And I'm going to go back into our text manager in a second. And we're going to cheat and take a look at this. Um, so hold this thought here before we come back. We're going to come back to this page here. I'm going to do this, though. So I leave that page ready to rock. We're going to go back to our text manager. And we're going to take a look at the message we just sent to maybe done. Now remember, close ticket text manager. This is a key advantage of our new text manager. Well, I, I say new, I think it's been a year now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't here when I joined five years ago. <laughs> so, All new. <laughs> so rainy day folder reminder went here. So please review the following DVI and let us know if you'd like to schedule any repairs, right? That's a simple text message follow-up that's pertinent to an inspection we've done at a, in a rate of time. Now let's open it up. 
And let's take a look how a rainy folder link looks compared to our DVI. Uh, and let's look at it cell phone size. Now, uh, oh, you know what? We didn't have a schedule link on this one um, in company setup. So we're missing out on a, on a small piece here. That's okay. Um, when it'll, let's cover it. Nope. You know what? Let's fix this because actually a lot of shops might have this issue too. So I'm going to go into company setup for a second. This is worthwhile error on my part. <laughs> grab your kiosk. Yep. I'm going to grab the kiosk because it's on for this one, right? Company setup. You see how my appointment field down here is blank. It's the, you just scroll all the way down to the bottom of your company setup page, guys. And you're going to see this there. You can put any link on there. So if you want this directed to your online scheduler, even if it's not our online scheduler, it should be our online scheduler, guys. It's, it's built into some of your packages. You should use it. <laughs> but, and, and I'll show you how easy it is to use it if you are using our, our online scheduler. Use your link, click, done. It's ready to rock. Now, let's see if this works. Uh, refresh. Boom. You see that button on the top now? The schedule appointment. This is basically what's unique about the DVI view for a rainy folder send versus the DVI send that you do during the visit. During the visit, we do not give them the option to schedule that appointment. If you're looking right. at cell phone size, you're going to see it just like this. Current status is that ticket is closed and they click on that button, and boom. There, they can punch in their information. Boy, it'd be neat if it did that automatic feature request. <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> Don't be sorry to Chris. It's not Chris. You're right. <laughs> but uh, you can go ahead and plug that in, and they'll then what's actually cool. Uh, let's, uh, Michael, what's the number on that one? 469. 469. 701. 701. 2417. 2417. Let's just do the full full deal here, right? We're scheduling an appointment for that focus. It's on here. We don't need to do the mileage, but we could have. We have a questionnaire, which we didn't set up. There's usually questions there. Again, we need to set up our kiosk for this demo site. Look when you get to the jobs section on our scheduler. If I'm going full screen on this too, this kind of shows you the workflow for our online scheduler. Outstanding DVI items are there for the customer to select their interest in having you review. We are not asking for authorizations to do a job here. We're not asking for dollar amount figures, but hey, yeah, I'm coming in for these things that you had in my DVI and the consistency now and the client experiences, they're scheduling their appointment with it from here too. This is gold. And next, right, we schedule the appointment. We're going to do this for 12 o'clock at lunch hour on Monday. That's a great time to come in. We should have blocked that off and we can with our schedule, but we haven't set it up. <laughs> We could block lunch hour. I don't give them lunch. No one. Eats. I don't eat. They don't eat either. No, I'm we just joking. stagger. We stagger lunch, right? That's uh, the polite way of saying no lunch. <laughs> so this is now an appointment, actually, in Auto Text Me. And if you're a Protractor user, it puts it in Protractor. By the way, soon that'll be in TechMetric. Hopefully, sometime soon, Shopware as well. Uh, but that is, if I go back to our standard auto, we get a nice little. Uh, appointment down here for maybe done details are even going to show us for what she wanted to have done the thing she clicked on in there the appointment time seamless it's so smooth so hopefully that's clear the customer gets that rainy day link to a dvi it's just the dvi with one bonus gives them the scheduling option directly inside of that inspection and you can tell them about that you can build it in to your messaging inside of that uh, rainy folder page. See, I open tabs and it doesn't help me any further, Michael. No, I have way too many open to begin with. Yeah, so let's let's go back to rainy day folder and let's take one more look at that template setup. Yes. Message template is right up here. So when I click on this, this allows me to build out the message that I wanna use by default. So if you are automating the rainy day folder, this is the message that will go out and don't worry, the Appropriate customer is going to receive the appropriate link programmatically through Autoflow. Uh, you don't have to do anything, and please don't break the link. <laughs> but uh, that's it. That's where you put it. That'll be the same template used for emails. Uh, you can do things a little different uh, in the reminders queue here in a second. I'm going to show you how this looks. Uh, but let's actually schedule this uh, to go out in a reminder queue. We'll use Rebecca's uh, reminder here, and we'll just schedule this on, uh, yeah, sure, April 14th at 11 a.m., we want to have that uh, go down. We have a button down here to update the reminder queue. So we now have that reminder date set. And if we go to the reminder queue, 
uh, for that April, was it? I recall. Mm -hmm. Yep. So let's go April. Well, here, let's do this. We'll just do the full month of April. All right. So now we can see it in Autoflow's reminder queue. The reminder queue is so powerful. This is a spot where somebody needs to make their domain in the shop. This is a great area. And I'm going to show you text manager again in a second here too, because this is really powerful there as well. The rainy folder allows you to see any scheduled messages that are set up for this individual. You can see when the message is going out. It's This date range is based on when the message is scheduled to be sent. Not when it was scheduled, but when it was scheduled to be sent. You can edit the message to taste. So if it's getting close to the time or day and you want to just kind of review the current week, uh, let's say the next seven days, this can be someone's job. Take a look at all the reminders that are going to be going out over the next seven days. Great way to start the beginning of the week, right? You can go in here, edit the messages, put a more personalized note in there. That can be somebody's activity in the shop. It is awesome. And you can even delete them. You can change the date that they go out. If Joe came in with a different issue and we want to bump that reminder out after a conversation, we could do it right here. Or, or, or we go back into text manager. Text manager is a great spot to be able to see, and then we'll borrow Rebecca again here, uh, scheduled messages. This I have been teaching lately as a part of my closing process mm -hmm. with a client. Hey, Mr. Client, this is when you can expect to hear from me again, because we have it right there in this individual's message box. We can then even go straight to it. The other piece, I just covered this with a dealership actually uh, yesterday. Uh, the other technique I would use, since exit scheduling is still yet to take root in the industry, despite my- to, It's coming. It's coming. It's the next <clears throat> big thing. <laughs> this is a, like, all right, so dogs hunting in the wild, about a 30% success rate on a hunt. It's about that same rate in our industry for getting a customer to make an appointment with us when they're at the counter. So you're going to fail 70% of the time. Plan on that. It's just like when you phone call someone, you can plan on getting a voicemail. You need to have a contingency plan for when they shoot down your attempt to try to get them that appointment. Yep. There's a softer approach <clears throat> in your recovery. They say, no, I don't know. I don't know if that time works. We'll just talk about it later. So no problem. Here's what I'm going to do, Mr. Client. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just schedule a simple text reminder uh, as a follow-up for you. And I'm going to set that reminder as a custom reminder in our reminders queue. Type in the name. So we'll just use maybe done as an example here. She's got a lot of reminders. Wow. We've been busy with that ticket. <laughs> it's a demo customer. It gets Your you customers are going to have a lot cleaner view than ours, but we can type any message we want. Just reminding you that your car could be awesome. Give us a call, right? And you can pick the date anytime you want. Michael, May 25, you're getting a text at two o'clock, add it to queue, done. It's not an appointment, but it's a deliberate touch, potentially with a better typed out message than the one I used. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, see, this is the fun stuff for me because this gets to a layer where when we're onboarding, we usually don't get to this depth. of No, that. we don't. And one of the other things that we try to build on with all of the things we want done at the counter with the advisors, mm -hmm. we still are trying to boil down the fact that we need to be freeing up the time for our advisors to handle these types of items. And I'm going to recommend again, Guys, text messaging with your clients are going to free up the time to allow your advisors more time to ask these questions, to do exit scheduling, to do the rainy day folders, to go through and follow up. Cutting down the number of phone calls is going to allow that time. If you have not turned on automated messaging from your workflow, I recommend you do so. It is going to free up the time your advisors need to be able to handle these extra tasks we are going to be asking of them, like marking these things down, reviewing the follow-ups. We know that's going to take extra time. You have to have a, a plan to put in place to give them that time. Absolutely. And then when you're in rainy folder and you have these guys doing things like clockwork with those yes, no approvals, this is the magic button. 
the two minute webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. But you get some options in this too, folks. You do have uh, the week threshold that you can send these out. We do we allow the automated component of an inspection to go up to 12 weeks. Now, if you don't think that's sufficient, let us know. But we believe that for an inspection that was done as a basis of follow-up, that's a decent threshold for that inspection to still be true. Uh, past that amount of time, we're talking uh, a couple months, uh, yeah, that's no, no new DVI inspection, yeah. kind of. My opinion, even twelve, even twelve weeks is starting to, mm -hmm. depending on the driving that person does. Let me ask Michael: Do you have a sweet spot that you would you would aim at? Um, to be honest, I usually set between set six and nine weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I six was thinking nine. nine personally but six uh, to nine weeks is usually a sweet spot depending on again this really is going to depend on how far out are you scheduling how far out do you want to be scheduled where do you you can filter those things in from that aspect yeah no nope, this is uh this is the key but yeah rainy day folder it's not the only piece of reminders we have a couple minutes left here so if there's any questions i'll happily go into some further detail i am going to demonstrate one other feature that is available for all of the innovative tier uh, users. That's the uh, the highest tier of the the software that we're using. If you're using digital work order, good good clue you're, you you qualify for this. Uh, it is the service reminders piece. Mm -hmm. uh, this might be a little hard in my demo shop, uh, but let's look at let's look uh, let's look a wider range here. Do we not sell enough work in this shop? We probably don't. <laughs> what it is, and I actually have a better better way of showcasing this, and we can talk about this another time. Uh, the service reminders module is actually an AI uh, utility that's looking for the uh, oil changes uh, that have been done in the visit, uh, what it will look like once you are actually getting the data. And this is a nightly grab as well. We see the jobs that were done in the shop and we can identify if it had an oil change, if it had a tire rotation or if it had a state inspection and we can automatically queue up these items for you to schedule a reminder. We did not automate this fully since there's an AI component involved and folks, we are in an age and an era where AI is being released upon us, untested and unvetted. <laughs> We won't do that to you, uh, but we do want people to engage this tool. I'm going to show you a little bit about what you can do to set it up. But what this is, is it's looking at the kinds of services that you typically typically will be doing. So edit and config in the service reminders module. You'll see we have oil changes, conventional, semi-synthetic, or synthetic. allows you to set the time threshold for when that reminder should go out and what time frame you want that reminder to go before that customer is due. So if they're doing six months, it's going to go 15 days before that due date, right? <clears throat> the other piece, I, I like the tire rotation one too for tire stores, especially you guys. This is great. Some of you guys, that's a lot less, um, but these are the time-based intervals. Now, how long it takes someone to go there? Difficult to say. We also have mileage for uh, a, a variable as well. And if we know that it's 3,000 miles, that we recommend an oil change. This is gonna calculate out based on multiple visits. We do need multiple visits from the vehicle before this is accurate for this piece. It allows you to schedule a reminder that calculates when that range of mileage is likely to have occurred. So mm -hmm. that we can appropriately recommend that service too. Uh, very good for the tire rotation. I, I've seen this all over the place uh, with tire stores actually. So this is a really handy one. We give you everywhere from 1000 miles to that 100 yeah no that's 10 it's 10 no thank it's goodness. 10 thousand thank okay. goodness <laughs> yeah <Wow. laughs> yeah <laughs> then we set the time of day that those will go out as well and this is pretty useful you can even have different templates for different types of reminders so this is again a really powerful piece uh if you're on the higher tier packages of autoflow now with that Yes, Jordan in chat. I like that. Contact your sales rep. And Jordan in chat is actually one such rep. Swell individual, if you don't know that already. <laughs> and actually, uh, for the sake of those that are joining us today that are not existing clients, please, if you do want more information, uh, 
scan that QR code or, or just visit our website. There's a lead form on there. Autoflow.com is our website now. Uh, but if you scan that, actually, you can probably schedule a call with our swell Jordan White over there or Chan Patel, and they'll be happy to talk to you about even the features that you saw today as well. If there's something that you saw today and you're an existing client and you want to do it, don't fill out the demo form. Just email us, but you can fill out the demo form too. We want right, I did get one question that I did sure. like and want to bring up here, and it came from Chip just a minute ago. If you send a okay. reminder for an inspection, and their oil changes do same time. Would it be one or two reminders to the guest? So if you do an oil change and that reminder was already queued, but it happened before that, we automatically delete that from that queue. Yep. We try to think of everything. We really do. I'm sure there's a lot we haven't thought about. So let us know if we didn't. But that particular scenario definitely should be smooth. You mm -hmm. won't be reminding them two days after they visit you just because the reminder was set to go. Good question. Good question. Awesome. Michael, did I hit all the bullet points? You did, sir. As a matter of fact, we hit all the bullet points going through, I feel. And I think we uh, did a pretty good job on a rainy day folder, considering it's just basically click one button. Yeah, just one button to automate button. it, folks. <laughs> um, and again, this is, this is something that I have found has been one of the hardest things for shops to do, is get the toggles being used. The yes, no toggles. And it's one of those things, but once you make it part of your routine and the easiest way to do so is by reviewing the DVI through the sales call process. So it's in front of you and you can mark it as you go. But once you get them using it, you can utilize that yes, no information for repopulating the DVI and for your rainy day folder. It becomes very useful going forward. Yeah. And hey, I'll say the easiest way to get people to use those yes, no toggles Watch for the recording. We'll make sure this gets emailed out for you folks. Pop this into your service advisor's email. If you want us to put it in their email, give us their email. <laughs> and we'll we'll go from there too. But this is going to be good. I, I really think this is a great way to follow up and, and it's going to just do wonders for you guys. More so than I believe any deferred service type reminders are ever going to do. Awesome. Hey, thanks, thanks Doug. Doug. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for your comments and chat. It's been a pleasure. Look for us next month as well. We'll have some new items for you again. I think we've got it, Michael. Any final comments? I don't know. Just really enjoy uh, finally getting back on a webinar, and uh, hopefully I'll get, uh, get some time to do it again next month, too. Maybe I'll invite you. You know, I, <laughs> I will take the uh, the invite if you do. Awesome, dude. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Good times. Oh, uh, and we'll see some of you at Vision. Look for us. We'll see you next week. Uh, we will both be there. So Kansas awesome. City, here we come. Yeah, good times. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.